Good evening, and welcome to a pretty interesting episode. We're going to kind of do a bit of a varied setup, only because I got home from work and I'm able to do this. <laughs> so we're going to hit the patch watch first, and that's going to be the major changes. And then we're going to hit the two different iterations of patches that have come out, the I and the J of the PTU Wave 1. Talk about PTU timings and what, what I think is going to happen in the next few days. And then we'll finally test a theory uh, from the from none other than Aria from SC Leaks uh, about getting in and out of Warson faster. I want to actually test it in the PTU and see if the tip works for larger ships. So if that interests you, stick around. So with the patch watch, we are looking today. Uh, Wayne, good fellow from the from the content community, the outreach community uh, for CIG, uh, talked about what they're seeing from the development teams about how they want to see in the future different size of ship that have their particularly their power what he calls power triangle but really this is power management v2 with the capacitor gameplay iterations underneath of it i want to stick with the same wording i want to be very careful with my wording because they've already changed the name recently once on us and kind of combined kind of shuffled everything under one name so let, let's just Let's keep with that name, and this, you know, let's, uh, that'll keep us on, on, on the same footing. So, uh, as was mentioned here, Wayne talked about how last week they had the very, very well received and poorly received, depending on which ship you have, the shield and weapon rebalancing of all the different sizes, well, most of the weapon sizes, but all of the shield sizes, and how that's going to impact different sizes of ships. Huge buffer on the largest ships, ten you know, ten times the size of shields on cap ships versus large ships. Um, regen that's extremely low though, versus uh, small ships that have intense regen but extremely low amount of of actual shield points. And then also the shield facing changes, which have been relatively mixed reviews. So shield facing for those that that have uh, just tuning in, there is on each side of a ship. There's supposed to be a left, a right, a back, and a front, but the, kind of like, obviously, because the ship has all different sizes, uh, sides to it, it's a 3D object, it's kind of like the front is this entire curve, the inside, the right side is this entire right side, up and down, side to side, and the idea is that if you shoot a ship enough times in the one side, even if it has still shield hit points on the side on the other sides, this side will be significantly weakened, and then you can start damaging important components or start grinding through its armor and hull. On smaller ships, they have created just a simple bubble where all the shield faces are exactly the same strength, but they've been weakened in many cases, or even have less shields. Literally, whole shield modules have been removed from some some, some of the smaller ships. And instead, they will just have a rather weak bubble, but it's all around the ship. There's no weak side, strong side gameplay until you get to the largest, the, some of the medium and then larger ships. Uh, so that's kind of where it was last week. Diving into this week's discussion for Patch Watch, the vision for 3.14 uh, for speed and maneuverability is size-based. So yes, there will be different competitive ships, there will be racing ships, there will be military class interceptors, but there is also a size factor. In fact, in set interceptors, when we go down there, is like its own section, but I'm sticking with the term, the, the idea of a, of a ship that fa factors speed above all else. So you see here, the maximum G-forces acting on a pilot is one of the limitations, so what a human can endure, even with a G-suit and, and everything else, all the fancy systems on a ship. Uh, where you red out or black out, depending on if you're too too many positive or negative G's. Uh, Richard Branson's ship, for example, had three G's of, of force when it detached and kicked on its rocket and attempted to go into space and successfully went into upper atmosphere, into part of space, if you depending on what you're, where you draw the line. <laughs> but good for him, and congrats on their success. But that was uh, three G's of force. If you notice, the interior uh, camera did not cap capture Branson's face tucked up against the uh, back of his seat. Uh, even uh, Especially for an older guy like that, it probably did have a little bit of an impact on him. But you know what? That guy's had more experience than I've ever had in probably in my entire life. And he's going to keep, keep doing amazing things probably until money more than I can. So, hey, he, he gets the last laugh, I think. Um, avoid nose-to-nose -nose ship combat. 
So they're talking about pip wiggling and movement scripts where uh, somebody gets extremely close in your face and they, they really don't want that where somebody is sitting there with Gatling cannons and these, these, these extremely high damage short range weapons and they're so close like the systems don't even factor in correctly um, to make it fair for the, for the PvP especially. And uh, also PvE where AI is not able to actually turn and, and correctly address what they're shooting at. Like I, in your case, if you're shooting at them, you. Um, turn afterburner into boost. This is a factor I'm going to bring up at the end of this. They're getting rid of the term afterburner and replacing it with boost. Continuing their trend of changing names, frustratingly. Uh, so, we have tuned each ship for its intended role, Wayne says. The, this means that tuning ships to fit within an expected performance envelope for the use cases they were designed for while having clear pros and cons. For simplicity, during the ongoing balancing process, we have used these basic fighter archetype classes. And this is also reinforced by the fact modules of many, especially shields and weapons, have some of the same stats in certain classes of ship already during the testing phase. So no matter if it's a, you know, it could be a military class A, a military class, you know, B, C, it's going to have the same stats. It's going to, across the board, no matter what the name is on the, on the thing, it's going to have the same stats for balancing. And this is following the same concept. They have these archetypes that they're going to be using uh, to try to simplify, 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 and drive that home, and then start making each ship unique and figuring out what exactly its role is and start balancing each and every ship independently after they get these down. So the first up is the light fighter. Excels at 1v1 dogfights or swarm tactics with low durability, has the highest agility, excels at lateral acceleration and high rotation rate, Lateral being side-to-side -side acceleration. And obviously it's not directly side-to-side. -side. It could be, but you mainly you're going to start uh, like maneuvering, like uh, <laughs> serpentining, so to speak, uh, or high, and high rotation rate. And the boost, i.e. the new afterburner, affects mostly lateral acceleration. So you get a, you, your, your boost work in S slash afterburner works even better in a lateral acceleration more so than others. The specially made interceptor slash interdictor roles. So this is your highest speed ships that are designed to hunt down and fight the enemy. Your 350Rs that have a, to have the correct configuration and modules to be to be a nice interceptor. Your mantises that are in, you know that are also designed to knock people out of war, knock that, knock people out, but they're extremely light. And you get them out of warp or disable their ability to warp and catch up with them and stay with them while hopefully their friends come to save the day because they have like no weapons to speak of, very little weapons to speak of. Uh, they excel at forward acceleration, low durability, often carry specialized equipment, you know, like quantum jammers and uh, EMPs are another classic example that we'll, you'll be often seeing uh, some other unique tools like that to kind of hold the enemy down or just distract them, disorient them long enough for their friends to catch up. For, to, to get the fight. Uh, highest forward acceleration, only average agility, boost effects, mostly forward acceleration. So this is all, once again, gaining gain speed in a straight line towards the target. And that's, the, that's the, so they can fulfill their role. But they have low durability, and uh, they, they only excel in fast acceleration, but only average agility. So once they get there, they're really not going to be able to start trying to turn fight something they're going to need help fast to do their job. Otherwise, with their low durability, they're going to be knocked out very quickly. Medium fighters, which excel at loadout flexibility due to more hard points and equipment choices, which is a given. Uh, the average agility, average durability, and boost are equalized. And this is something you see in heavy fighters as well. So boost slash afterburner is equalized across all the different methods. So lateral, forward acceleration, um, when you're turn, when you're, when you're doing like, what is it called? Uh, high rotation rate, you know, things like that. E every single thing you can think of the mediums will do okay at, um, heavy fighters excel at prolonged combat, multiple ship engagements. So a good example of this would be say a group of vanguards, uh, escorting a fleet. And then they are asked to take on this enemy group that's trying to take out the fleet. 
suddenly those vanguards will have to fight, but they're not the best turn fighters, but as a group, they are very formidable and they are meant to kind of survive, endure, outlast. And because of their big quantum tanks, because of their ability to stick with a fleet that's usually bigger than them, they are ideal to bring. They're not the best fighter. They're not, they're not an interceptor in any way. They're not an interdictor, but they can bring some interesting things. Uh, for example, the Sentinel, the Vanguard Sentinel is very popular because it's a jamming ship. It has some really exciting different things. They did nerf EMPs. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but it, they have a lot of different unique systems. And uh, the Sentinel will have, like, for example, tricky, tricky missiles that will be able to trick the enemy into thinking there's a whole bunch of radar contacts until they visually identify them as there, but they're really not uh, ships that are a threat. So, you know, once again, uh, Sentinels can bring a lot to the table. The Vanguard with the Harbinger, which is a torpedo launcher, is, is another example of a very exciting Vanguard that can actually bring torps along with it. So these are examples of those. They are the only fighter class uh, capable of equipping man turrets, size 2 shields, and heavy weaponry. And that's a combination that's very nasty and um, really shows. But I don't think 1v1, these will be very good. That's why they talk about multiple ship engagements, prolonged combat, situations where they can really extend their, their extended range and all the extra value they bring to the table can really be seen. Um, I will say that man turrets almost, in some cases, can be a limitation because it's a, it's a personnel issue until NPCs come in. Topic for another day, though. Uh, heavy fighters also have poor agility, and their boost slash afterburner affects all axes equally, a lot like the mediums. So they're just stronger mediums that have a few more tools in their arsenal and uh, lack some of the agility. So what have I been talking about with this boost stuff? So the boost is a reworked afterburner to offer only brief advantages and discourage constant usage. But it is not based on heat if you see there heat is no longer the short-term limitation when people have used afterburners especially in atmo you've seen that like within seconds it's overheating it wants to fall your whole ship wants to fall out of the sky or you lose an immense amount of thrust at the very least um, the amount of boost available is dictated by your thrusters capacitor charge capacitor charge and i think heat will still be an implication but much less so um, but you need that minimum capacitor charge to engage and suffers from a regen delay after use. So if you keep if you keep chugging it, you're gonna find that there's gonna be issues. Engaging it does not have an instant reaction from your ship, which is different from the afterburner system. The boost is something new where it takes time to spool up for a short time before engaging. It also affects, as we mentioned before, rotational acceleration, very useful in bigger ships. So like the ship physically turning on itself upside down, things like that, very exciting stuff. Um, to be able, for example, to be able to get a man turret into position to, to get a shot on, on something attacking you or you're attacking, uh, that will be important. Um, the space break does not automatically engage boost anymore, although you can change this within the options menu. This is something more for competitive type uh, gameplay and for ships that want to turn and bur turn and burn, you know, expand style. Um, I wouldn't sweat this too much. Uh, like it says, you can change that within the options menu. But uh, with the uh, minimum capacitor charge issues, so the triangle that we always talk about, the 33-33-33 triangle of propulsion, shields, weapons, the more you apply to propulsion, the more you'll be able to kick on your boost. The boost will be important, especially not just for ships in combat, but ships getting a surprise, like for example, incoming torpedoes or missiles, and they need to start doing evasive action. Or if you're hoping something doesn't notice you, you want to be able to get into QD quicker and be able to get out of get out of town. Or especially for the hauling community, uh, think about when you get to a port or if you're going into a sketchy location. A good example is Grim Hex or somewhere like that where you have, or Levski back in the day, where you can have small meteorites and other things that can block you or ships just sitting there in the middle of nowhere, just sitting there. Um, or even just at big ports, customs agents, the AI that are that have failed and they just sit there. That always bugged the heck out of me. NPC ships that are at PO are another good example because they come in, they sit there, and uh, they, they do land eventually. But any kind of surprise like that, having additional percentage in your propulsion 
and a ship that's either defensive or hauling or it's a mission running system, you can always add capacitor back in that 33, 33, 33 triangle back to back to weaponry or even more into weaponry once you're caught, once you're jammed, once you have to defend yourself, it's, it's now or never. <laughs> um, so I could easily see people doing a 50-50 split between, we- between sh- uh, propulsion and shields, especially when they're not expecting a fight. And then that is something that you and eventually your co-pilot, once the power management is brought over to the co-pilot seat correctly, uh, will be able to manage and switch around as needed. Um, especially with shield recharge rate and, and boost from thrusters, that combination is going to be a make or break for a lot of players. You're going to have more and more empowered interceptors, interdictors, and all these fun ships that are designed to go very fast in a straight line and... Suddenly, if a ship has an immense amount of boost capacity and they can kind of, so to speak, wiggle out of that trajectory and that ship shoots right past and then they have to come back to recover because they were traveling. Remember, if they're traveling at immense speed, their human being that's sitting inside that ship is also at that factor of maximum G-forces. Their ship also has to worry about this, their, their boost having to recharge. So having these uh, capacities... Uh, at, at your disposal where you're more geared towards propulsion and shields on a larger ship may save you, not all the time, but at the very least it may even just buy your friends time to come get you or uh, your defensive uh, uh, escorts time to react. And, and every second that they're not pounding on your shields is one more second you're alive, one more second you have a better chance of getting out of the situation, negotiating, giving yourself time and distance to really figure out what the heck's going on and, and hopefully come out of it successfully. This is the triangle that we're talking about. I'll also show it in more high definition at the end of this video when we go to test out that new theory about leaving the Orison faster um, and, and exiting Crusader's atmosphere. So that's all we have here right now. I highly recommend, if you haven't already, coming to the general forum in Spectrum. So it's, it's all it is, it's just the general forum in Spectrum. And at the top pinned is this Alpha 3.14 patch watch, thrusters, tuning, ships, and power triangle update. Click on this, click on this patch. I'm sorry, Fred. Come in here and post down here. Vote up those that you agree with as well. So if you see something that you agree with or disagree with about different types of categories and roles, like for example, the roles do not match one for one with the categories here and will be updated in time. So we adjust. So, you know, these are, this is important factors. You know, as as Cruz discussing here, um, often carry does not mean exclusively carry. Some interceptors and interdictors will have these items. Some will not. And non-interceptors slash interdictors will not be blocked from equipping these items when available. So, for example, a small EMP uh, system on an Avenger or, or, or a, cru- a Cutlass Blue, uh, for example, is not an interceptor or interdictor. It not really. It really is not. But it does have some of the equipment that you would expect on an interceptor interdictor type class ship. Uh, so that's something that's interesting. So there's a few uh, good comments on here already. I think there's not enough. I think out of these, out of the out of the pages that you know we really work through, there needs to be a lot more here. You know, 49 pages sounds like a lot, but if you look, there's only 188 replies overall, and most of these are you know, comments onto different comments onto different comments and upvotes are immensely powerful because it can boost up. You make sure that your discussion is noticed. If, if you're already have something you see here that you agree with, you know, talking about G's standard G suits, you can get really lost in the clouds here. No pun intended, but whatever. Okay. So that is it for this topic. Uh, what we're going to roll through is we, we've worked through the propulsion. We've worked through the whole patch watch for thrusters, tuning ships, and power triangle update. There's not really that much deep, deep details on this, but we'll continue to watch this as we continue. And keep these in mind as, as well as the weaponry and shields to see the vision of these smaller patches. Now, the actual patch notes for yesterday and today. On the left is yesterday's. Hello. And on the right is today's. Hello. <laughs> the I and the J. I used a lot more numbers when I did my uh, when I did my video two days back, I think it was. 
Uh, I did like the 763-0010, something like that. I'm going to, from now on, use these numbers and letters. I'm going to use the letters if, as much as possible. I think it's simpler to keep track of. This is iterations because they're so fast. I mean, this is a tale of two patches within just, just over 24 hours from each other. That's how fast we're seeing iterations of patches for PTU Wave 1. And I'm going to start this at the top with saying that I believe that the PTU will be open to all backers very, very, very soon. I have no secret information, no rumors even at all, but when you see patches that are this tight, within 24 hours they're bouncing out patch after patch after patch, they are ready. These are fine-tuning patches because they have some major changes to everybody's ships and they're trying not to have everybody leave and, and be angry when they finally get to taste their ship and say, hey, why is my Connie Taurus that I've been waiting for years for blowing up so easily? Which is something they fixed. We're going to go into. Um, and on the flip side of that, they're going to be looking at smaller ships and not making them you know, useless. That's the goal is to make is to find that balance enough where no one's 100% happy, but everybody is happy enough um, so with the tale of two patches, there's a, there's a method to my madness here. Uh, there's not that much of a difference. So both of them are for wave one. Unfortunately, I really wish this did not have the word wave one. I wish it had at least wave one, two, you know, like that having multiple waves. Um, uh, right now it doesn't, I, I'd even prefer if it was just all backers, but it is what it is. Um, with the current conditions, each time they're giving 15 million AUEC and there is, you know, wipes. Uh, sorry, there is uh, AUEC for this patch set. So 15 AUEC, when you make your copy over, you can buy a few ships or rent a whole bunch of ships and really get a lot of good experiences. And most of the ships are available, at least last time I was in, were available on the ASOP terminals, except for the RSI ships for some reason. So you can chest out tons and tons and tons of rare ships right now, even if your fleet is very small. Uh, you can see here, current cloud tech is in development. There's ongoing SDF occlusions. So they're trying to figure out why the clouds are going to be visible, when they're going to be visible, so they can get more detailed clouds and avoid the artifacting. So there's like this pixelation effect, like it looks like it's out of like a, a, a graphical Photoshop style program where there's like a spray can effect going on in some places and they're trying to make sure that doesn't happen. Um, they're going to continue to work on the quality. I, I mentioned this before. I put the clouds on medium. They were originally set to high or very high or something like that. And I made them, I made a medium just so I could have more consistency, especially when I'm recording. So for content creators, and I would also say that people with, you know, weaker PCs uh, for average PCs, I would say that it, it probably set your clouds to medium, uh, unless you're just planning to sit at Orison and hang out and not, maybe not fly too much. And just, that's what you're there for to get screenshots, things like that. I don't even think recording is a good idea if you got the very high cloud settings, but it could be that they fix them in these settings. I would love to try that and see how it is. I have seen rock solid consistency, a single 30K in the span of the past 72 hours. The only times I've stopped is because I had to stop. I had to cut a video and move on, or uh, I was switching servers because I was catching up with friends uh, to move into another section. Uh, on the live server for different, for different projects I'm on. Uh, but uh, issue council update, they're talking about how uh, they, you can ask, they, they will ask you if they can contact, if you would like the developers to contact you, <laughs> I don't know why it's worded this way, allow developers to contact them about their reports. So they they want they're ask they're going to ask you when 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 you have a report in the in, in the issue council they're going to ask you if they can reach out to you it's purely optional as it said and it's going to be basically so they can ask you to so certain questions about reproducing issues you can you can change this you can go into the issue council settings menu and you can remove this setting and as it shows in the most latest patch you have the same ability to remove that issue. Uh, if, if you feel it's an issue, if you feel that's an invasion of privacy, etc. cetera. Um, speaking uh, from when I've seen the devs in action in just the Spectrum chats and uh, on, the, on, the, on the test feedback for, on the, on the test feedback threads and things like that, nothing, nothing 
crazy. I'm not an Evo or anything like that. Um, but uh, in any of the normal stuff, I have seen that they're very fair and it's very simple questions. Um, most of the time it's asking like, hey, what resolution were you at? It doesn't, I can't really get that. I can't really gather what that was. Or, hey, did you have anything running in the background, you know, that was very high in this? Or <sighs> which driver version are you running on your graphics card? Stuff, very simple questions like that. I've seen them bring up and discuss. Uh, still worth mentioning. If you look at the testing focuses, they are the same. The known issue list is changing slightly. I am not really going to go into these too much. Uh, the XXL hangers are not going to try to murder you when you try to leave. So that's good if you have a big, big ship and you, you spawn an Orson. Uh, so if you have a Reclaimer, rejoice. <laughs> um, you know, that's one of the nicer fixes. Uh, you can see there's a few other ones. Dust Storms and Hurston have been fixed. You know, properly factoring. Um, missiles, the big, the big one that they did not fix yet. Missiles do not follow flares as a countermeasure. Translation, flares do not work against missiles. Unfortunately, still, that's still part of the testing. Uh, they mentioned these about players can clip through exterior doors at 890 jump. And that is not on this list. Now you're starting to see why I like to go by these when they're so tight together and go through very, very simply side by side. Um, it's not perfect, but that's what it is. Also, I'll let you know the secret. I really don't look too hard at the known issue list. I glance at it and I see it. Is there any ships that are relevant to me? Is there anything that's like really tight for me? Like, um, unable to scan for FPS or ROC size mining deposits until very close. That's a good thing to know. If I, if I was about to do a shooter video or I was going to hang out with friends and do an ROC mining run, this is the type of stuff I'd notice. I like to use these as... If you look at the Mysterio instructions, you're not going to look at these things and you're going to be very bored. Your eyes are going to glaze over. You're not going to remember anything. But if you look at this as just a, as a, like you're hanging out with the dev and they're mentioning a few things and they're, you know, just, just, you're literally getting the relevant information. That's all you're plucking out of here. This is what you're really thinking of. Like, Hey, by the way, if you're running the ROC, remember deposits aren't going to work until they're very close. We're working on it, but that's the way it is right now. That's the way I think of these. They're a living thing. It's like kind of a, just a few notes passed on by the development teams to us. Think of it that way. You're going to have a good time. If you look at these for exacts, like how close is close? <laughs> you, they, they don't, they don't have that detail. You're, you're going to have, you're going to have a, you're going to be very upset, <laughs> especially on these test uh, notes, especially when they're pumping these notes out in the span of once again, just over 24 hours, they had an entire patches turned around and this documentation for those patches. That's a pretty impressive feat, even for how, how the large of a size the development team is for the Star Citizen PU and, and all the supporting folks from the, probably the squadron side, the pitch in for when these get in the approach times. I don't know though, just speculation on that second part. So, uh, Orison performance and lighting polishing pass uh, so there's going to be some more discussion about this tomorrow. This is probably not a coincidence. Tomorrow, uh, i.e. Friday, there is going to be a big old review of lighting and discussing that on the, on, on, on the Star Citizen pages. And I will give you an exact information on that. So I jumped ahead slightly because my, my grand secret plan was to load up the game right after we completed this, but I'm jumping ahead just, just to kind of get this moving and I'm going to have to follow my own advice. Um, I mentioned before at the latest com links, if you are in the, not in the top four and you're wondering where to go, you hit this button, the view all button. Hopefully it will actually render and the video will not get messed up. But, uh, inside here this week in star citizen is one of the videos, one of the content blocks that has a video or a text box attached to it. In this case, it's a text. You can see here on Friday, you'll see the update to the subscriber vault and the RSI newsletter will be in your inbox. More importantly, don't be wrong, I love content, but more importantly, Star Citizen Live also returns this week at 8 a.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. UTC. Members of the lighting team will join us in game development show that promises to 
illuminate a small piece of their daily process. God dang you, Jared. Or, sorry, Jake. Uh, okay, Jake Jake Bradley. Sorry. <laughs> that said it a lot like what Jared would say. Maybe you helped. <laughs> Maybe, uh, you've been around him too long or you helped him with the scripting. I don't know. But you guys are uh, peas in a pot a little bit there. <laughs> but uh, so there's your answer. I would not hold them to 8, 8 a.m. Pacific for that video. It's a Star Citizen Live. It will probably take them time to get that running. Uh, streaming anything is a nightmare. It is something that always takes time unless you get extremely lucky. But do expect it in the morning. So uh, Pacific. I'm actually an Eastern, Eastern EST fellow. Um, but uh, even for me, I would expect that probably around, you know, noonish, something like that would be a very fair estimate. One o'clock, you know, something like that would probably be safe for the Eastern folks. And morning for, you know, as you continue to go west uh, in Canada, the United States, that kind of thing. Um, for the for the euros, I apologize. Uh, I think the best I can do is just mention that they say 3 p.m. E UTC, and I would expect a little bit later than that. So maybe in your early early evening would be when you wouldn't expect that. So, uh, but yes, uh, you know your universal time there. Um, probably could do that if it wasn't right after work. I just worked 12 hours, <laughs> but just adding five hours, six hours just seems to be a lot of lot of. Uh, adding. And then I also want to thank my Germany folks. Uh, I want to take a moment to, to recognize that, I mean, I'm starting to see a big uptick in folks that are watching from Germany, from the UK, even a few from France. Thank you all for giving me a shot. And I appreciate that you're around. I, I hope you're getting what you're looking for out of my videos. Thank you for being here. And please, you know, uh, uh, let me know, give me feedback if there's anything specific other than me uh, messing up the time zones, because <laughs> I can't promise that I'll get them right every time. But uh, I will attempt to uh, consider those things in, in my videos. I want to give everybody a fair shot and, an under and, and a fair perspective uh, from folks. Uh, for what it's worth, I actually like to play from a lot of folks from Europe and of all places, Australia uh, is pretty popular with some of the communities I hang out with. And that's actually a really cool combination. So I'm used to the massive time zone jumps. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's something that I'm still always got to be mindful of and cognizant of. Uh, so for gameplay, uh, ongoing ship capacitor balance and polish passes. Uh, like I said before, the lighting is being fixed up for the, probably the Star Citizen Live this Friday so they can go into it strong. They can show off that beautiful arson lighting and all the fixing of it. Um, expect more lighting, lighting there. Expect more clean lighting through the clouds, on the personnel, on the ships. Uh, I would expect that to be the cleanest place for lighting. Uh, lighting is always a challenge for real lighting. It's always an asset. Um, baked lighting is something that you always want to try to strive for in a game where you have moving spacecraft and and and, and, and spacesuits with headlamps and ships that have lights and spotlights. It, it must be an immense challenge. I can't wait to find out on Friday how the geniuses think of that stuff because more hats off to those teams. Okay, so uh, after we talk about the ongoing passes. So this is one of the reasons I stack these. On yesterday's patch, we have, we have done further core tuning for ships, updating more ships and turrets to exchange default ballistic loadouts with energy weapons. Slightly buff anti-fighter range. Self-explanatory, glad to see it. Slightly reduced fighter carry cannon range. But they did give it they did keep the, the damage on those fighters, by the way. Uh, streamlined size five and up velocities and ranges. Greatly increases the retaliator's hull health. That's gonna make a lot of retaliator and retaliator base people who are holding on to that retaliator base for later very happy. Uh, right now they're loners to retaliate your bomber, but eventually it'll have cargo, it'll have a drop, it has a drop module. Uh, the Retaliator's modular, and it has a lot of exciting things on it. It even has like um, um, quarters, like living quarters, maybe even VIP rooms uh, for the lowest VIP missions. Uh, upgraded the Razor EX power plant, and the star map will now zoom to the solar scale each time when it's opened, finally. Uh, that's something I've learned to do is just as soon as I hit the skyline button on my Moby Glass, I'm, I'm literally flicking that scroll wheel like crazy. And um, now let's take a look at on the right. Today's, we have done further core tuning for ships. Reduce the range of size 1 through size 4 cannons. 
increase cannon power efficiency. So it'll have less draw on that capacitor. Further polish pass on cannon fire rate and delay. Remember yesterday, they nerfed the fighter range, the carried cannon range. But they, in this, today, they further polish pass on cannon fire rate and delay. So I think they're giving a little bit of a buff back, especially the cannon power efficiency, the polish pass on the fire rate and delay. That seems to be codes for we, we nerfed it a little too much, so we're going to buff it in other ways, but we still want that type of behavior where the uh, cannons that are carried by fighters have a short range, but they've gained, at the very least, power efficiency. And if I'm reading between the lines, they also gave them a, a slight fire rate and uh, less of a delay on the cannons. But we'll have to confirm that. See, this is an example of these 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 uh, short patches that are discussion for the patches and notes that aren't really proper notes. Like, I would love to see, like, we increased or decreased the delay by two seconds. We decreased the range by 10 meters. You know, the, those type of things, or, you know, 30 feet. Uh, so upgraded our Hurricane's power plant was today and slightly reduced the Hurricane's health. This is another example of, I think they saw an issue with the Hurricane's weapon systems operating correctly, but then they panicked because it was a little too strong in the offense, so they nerfed its defense slightly. So it's an example of the buffs and the nerfs. So if we're reading between the lines here, yesterday they gave quite a lot of buffs to larger ships and they made the, the size five and up velocities and ranges more coherent for the weapon systems. And uh, also right here, slightly buffed anti-fighter gun range. And <laughs> he even gave the retaliator a uh, greatly increased hull health. Once again, this is supposed to be a military vessel with serious armor and shields and such to be able to get in and deliver its tor size nine torpedo load. Um, all six of them on the one that isn't, you know, doesn't have other modules, the bomber class ones. Uh, but um, over here, we see discussion of reducing range of size one through four cannons again. Increased cannon efficiency, though, polish pass on cannon fire rate and delay, and uh, slightly reducing the hurricane's health. I think it was a little too strong at taking out smaller ships. Um, interesting. Very interesting stuff. A few nerf bat things here for the fighters. Now, on the same day, we, <laughs> we saw the vision of Wayne posted today for Patchwatch for the propulsion, where they, they talk about all these boosts and power bonuses for agility, for speed on the smaller ships. So the smallest ships and the smallest interceptors, interdictors, they're going to enjoy incredible amounts of speed. Even the medium uh, class of fighters, they should enjoy a good, well-rounded approach. Um, whereas these larger ships are going to enjoy a lot of weaponry and hull health and some other you know, nods that we're seeing. This is not the first time we've talked about this. Um, you can check out my video. I'm going to put in the cards uh, about the shield and weaponry original discussion from last week, uh, the vision they have for that. But they want these larger ships to be able to stand their ground. But at the same time, I do not see them as fighter killers unless they're meant to be. So I don't think just because of, just because the small ship cannot kill the large ship very easily does not mean it can't do swarm tactics. It was literally even mentioned in the small ship part of the, the discussion above. Uh, sorry, in the last, last discussion that we just had uh, about Wayne's patch watch from this week, just today. Um, I see smaller ships as being able to gang up and at the very least disable a larger ship. And I'm not saying a capital ship or anything, but a, a you know, medium ship into a large ship and then be able to get friends to finish it off or maybe even, you know, force it to negotiate and drop its cargo to survive that kind of thing to be left alone. Um, especially if they have interdictors that cannot be killed. So that's an interesting thing. I want to see the, the, the strength of those interdictors and interceptors. And can a small gang keep them alive while they constantly are pulsing their QEDs or their EMPs, whatever they're using to hold down, preventing quantum, preventing those systems from being able to replenish the large ship enough to get the kills in on these smaller ships and start hammering them back. Uh, you see this bonus here uh, to law system changes. Greatly increase the time and cost of impounding for parking violations and reckless vehicle operations around landing pads. They're trying to go after pad rammers again. That's actually up from yesterday. Um, don't know why. I've also seen that this has caused a lot of good and bad. Folks feel that the Constellation Emerald color 
is better matched now with the Emerald Rover. That's what they try to do. What they actually got is a lot of people that were angry that liked the original or they didn't like the original paint. They, they are very happy now uh, with the new with the new system and the, 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 the lack or adding of two-tone paint uh, really excites them. And uh, as a Phoenix fan myself, who's always, actually always wanted an Emerald, if I could if I could have justified getting one, as well as my regular Phoenix that I already have, um, I'm excited to see it getting getting some love. I like the fact they got those those uh, the green tint to the lights on the inside to kind of give it that a different flavor. Um, I don't know how I feel about the new paint. I think it's nice that it got a nod. I think it's a little too much. I um, can't wait to see what it'll look like from yesterday's because I have not had a chance. I, I was on last night. I don't think I had a chance to see the emerald as of last night since patch because this is the afternoon patch, 4.30 p.m. Eastern. So for the Aura folks, that'd be in late into your evening. Um, and uh, for our West Coast friends, that'd be your morning. <laughs> so I don't think I've seen it since then. And uh, I will say that uh, I'm going to hold my judgment until we really see what the final is on the Emerald. As it is, the regular Phoenix, I think, actually ended up with the green tint lights. They're going to fix that, I'm sure. <laughs> we'll see. Anyway. Uh, greatly increase the time and cost of impacting parking violations and reckless vehicle operations around pads. It bears mentioning twice. It is so important to start controlling these pad rammers, especially as we're not going to get personal hangers for multiple patches. I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but I mean, we just did roadmap to 3.17 just yesterday talking about this. They're talking about persistent hangers then. They're talking about in 3.17. You know, we're, we're talking about, you know, we're talking about quarter three. We're talking about, you know, the, you know, late fall. You know, we're talking about really nailing down these persistent hangers and do or die on that and really seeing where it ends up. The, I love persistent hangers. It's a major hurdle, milestone. It's a big question mark for haulers, unfortunately. But at the same time, it bears mentioning that we need to iron out the public pads now and get them usable for everyone and be comfortable to use for now until we get those persistent hangers. And even when we have the persistent hangers, the new player experience will be tied heavily to those in, those issues of impounding parking and reckless vehicle operations and impounding vehicles for the right reasons. If you're sitting on a pad for a half hour, yeah, I get it. But if they're sitting there just for an extra minute because they're waiting for their friend to come on board, give them, I, I, there needs to be like almost like a shield to protect them like if there isn't other people queuing up ships. So in a lot of spaceports, there's like nine hangers alone. There's nine smaller of the pads alone at the minimum. If half of them aren't even being used at any given time, give people a little bit more leeway. You don't have to tell them. I mean, because you give, you, you, know, you give a mouse a cookie, <laughs> but you, you can make it clear. Maybe just give a little tiny indicator that shows like, high you know use time period or something just a little indicator or just a little like wording like the like the voice goes please um your, your pad has been assigned uh please note that this is a high volume time piece is a high you know traffic time period and uh exit as soon as possible or something you could just have something as simple as that you don't have to tell them the exact numbers but if it's not that type of situation give them a give them a little longer to kind of be on that pad and that way give all of us i think a better experience of what it'll feel like when we finally have our own persistent hangers. Being able to join up your friends and your org mates, being able to mount up your gear and check and check your ride and make sure everything's where it should be. Check the things like food and water are on board as we get more and more inventory is important. 3.15, for example, that's going to be important. And being able to mount that stuff and, and double check and kind of do your, your, your own little checklist, making sure your, your weapons are mounted uh, and, and properly set up. Um, don't forget, uh, the way they're setting it up very, very soon, it's going to be ammunition and missiles will not be replenished in, every time you die. So you'll have to pay to get that, make sure that's replenished. Same thing with fuel. So that's going to be something very soon. Fuel's already being rolled out that way and being tested that way. Uh, but ammunition is the next step. Uh, we will see. Uh, you'll you'll unload, you know, your size nine twerps off your retaliator or or your eclipse, and suddenly you're going to have to figure out a way to pay for new ones, and they're not going to be, you know, one UEC. So just a thought. Greatly increase cost of that. 
update the new missile UI. Notice there's nothing about that here. So uh, they're adding the new missile lock UI. And uh, this also has like a PIP system that shows you the incoming missile, by the way, and the new system. It's very nice. You can even shoot at the missile. Don't forget, just because your countermeasure flares suck and they don't work at the moment, <laughs> uh, you can still shoot the dang missiles. So don't 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 just give up the ship. Keep it keep it keep maneuvering. Hit H anyway for your countermeasures. You might get lucky, and the other countermeasure might help. And also, you can shoot them while you're doing all that. Uh, vehicle ping and blob effect. Polish pass. It's nice. Sliced HUD polish pass. This is the uh, the canvas slice system. So when when you talked about all that different information and you see me fly in, in more recent videos, that's the HUD we're talking about. And yet more HUD indicators. I don't know how I feel about this. I've said multiple times that these addi every additional indicator is a distraction. They need to allow you to adjust these and modify your HUD to be your style. Some people want it more plain and, and less sophisticated. And maybe even just a you know, word like velocity limiter, not the on-off. Or just the word VTOL is lit up if it's if you're in VTOL mode. G, you know, G safe's the same way. Um, or off completely where you don't even see it or on completely, like it comes on by standard and then you can adjust it. But topic for another day. I could do an entire episode on UI and feel and fit and finish on HUDs and uh, your, your, not just the ship HUD, but also your EVA HUD's gonna become critical as well. And the motorcycle HUDs and all that kind of stuff when you're in space uh, for salvaging and for sneaking around and stuff like that. Anyway, major bug fixes. I'm not going to go through every one of these. Please do not start glazing your eyes over or clicking away just because of this, uh, <laughs> if you haven't already. <laughs> but um, major bug fixes are nice. If you notice, you don't see the same damn thing over and over again because these are going to be fixed and then they are not in today's build. In the future, if I do these again this way, I should definitely put like something at the top. Like this is yesterday's. Even just as something as simple as that probably would have been pretty useful looking back. I'll do that for the future. At the very least, I could do something like that. Next, in the future, even further, I'll probably have to do a custom setup. Um, I just wanted to make sure that you could really read this. And uh, as always, this is me from the past. I wish I put this at the beginning. Uh, you can always follow along. Um, the links are going to be down below to everything, so you can just check everything out yourself. Really scrutinize these and spend your own time at your own speed checking these out. But I'm just trying to give you perspective on what's going on. But the the headline here on the major bug fixes is there's a lot of fixes. Like, I mean, not everything's huge. You know, served drinks should no longer have a chance to return back to the bartender's hand. Bartenders are back at the Orson bar where they should be, you know. Clusher's O2 repair mission should no longer fail. If somebody dies in prison, it's, you know, that, that, that's not a big deal. But some other things I think are really important. Gladius cockpit should no longer have an intense amount of glare. With that glare, and when you were near anywhere near the sun at an angle, you could you couldn't even use the damn Gladius. And this was supposed to be like the show ship for the new HUD, for a lot of the new touchable techs where you could flick the switches inside your cockpit. And also like uh, you could stow your weapons for, remember it's important for inventory later. Um, so that's gonna become really useful in 3.15 and beyond. And uh, all that work and that stupid glare was really ruining it. That's an example of that. Being able to sit in your Carex captain's chair you know, like being able to actually go into your office and sit in your own damn chair of your ship that you can be proud of. That's really cool. Um, this is another one. Fixed an issue causing the glaive to land well off center during automatic landings. When I was younger, I played a game called Silk Road as a kid, and I had a lot of fun in that game. But I had the unfortunate side effect of pronouncing it as Glavi. And that carried over to one of my first Star Citizen videos. So if anybody has dug deep enough into my uh, catalog, you'll probably find it. I'm not going to link it, but if you want to go find it, go for it. And uh, I'm like, this Glavi is great. This Glavi is great. And people are just going, oh my God. So if you've ever rolled your eyes at the way I pronounce Banu, um, and I have gotten better, uh, just, just understand that it's been a long learning process for me. 
and it's something where it's uh, old habits die hard in some cases. Anyway, <laughs> uh, technical crashes, server crashes, backend crashes, backend server optimizations. This all means less 30Ks. That's all you need to know. That's what they should put at the top of there. Honestly, uh, CIG, I'd volunteer to write these type of things for you. I don't think you'd appreciate it, but I could definitely write these correctly. <laughs> less 30Ks. Less 30Ks. Really cool stuff. <laughs> when you have backend service stability fixes, that means that when you want, why is my Moby Glass yet again not loading my stuff? Why is my armor not getting on me? And so I'm walking outside after waiting a minute or two and I'm still choking from no air. Why? This is why. Backend services are not streaming correctly. With these fixes, they should stream better. We still have to test that, but at face value, that's it. And these right here are two big things. Fix two main thread deadlocks. Deadlocks are bad. If you crash with a deadlock, it means basically you're going to CTD, crash to desktop. No matter what, do not pass go. And this is a major, major like showstopper. It's very hard to recover from those. And I will add that server crashes are not much better. I know you're probably like, why am I picking on deadlocks? <laughs> well, server crashes are not much better as well. Server crashes mean that if the server has a crash itself, or your communications with the server crash and it can't be recovered, you won't be able to just respawn back into your, reconnect uh, into where you were. Uh, one of the nicer things that I've been seeing lately is when you do have a major error, you're crashing back to your menu or even crashing back to desktop, but you can just click right back in the loader. Do not bother to re-verify, just relaunch. Go in, load the game, and sure enough, if you're in party, there's like a rejoin button where you can just join in the game. And sure enough, you're standing on your ship or standing right where you were just mining, like nothing happened. It's happened quite a few times to me now where you know, I've had crashes over the span of many patches and being able to join back in. It is a mind melter when you, when you realize like, oh, all my stuff is not completely gone. So don't just spare when things go wrong. Be sure to think about those. If you're going to comment on these, you heard me say about patch watch, patch watch, comment on those. Please continue to, by the way. I would only do today's, the J edition, of course, because I'm pretty awesome, but no, I'm just kidding. Uh, there's less replies. It is more recent. Uh, this is the one they're going to be keeping closer uh, tabs on, although the patch watch is being like officially supported for comments and discussion, and I've been seeing more responses from the development community in patch watch itself. Okay, so that's the patch notes. The reason I went through them this way, once again, is because they're smaller patches, they're starting to get fine-tuned, and they're literally less than 24 hours apart. And there's a lot of good little details we can really glean from this. Now, my final thing today I'd love to do is I'm going to attempt to go into the game. Actually play the game? <laughs> okay, we are in the game. We're gonna get over to the spaceport over here in Orson and test this theory. I just want to mention for inventory that I was actually in the story last night and I thought about this, that even with this massive backpack, that says 7K here, but really that backpack holds a lot more if you look at the torso that comes with it. This is the same set as the uh, paid inventory, by the way. This is the blue and white one that you can buy at Orison for in-game cash for like 8,400 UEC, I believe it is. There's also a Argo colored one at another location. I think it's Tressler. Don't quote me on that last part, but the Orison one's blue and white. You can get it here uh, on the production uh, Providence platform. Uh, and um, notice like this thing's got a huge amount of storage space, but even with something that large, if you were say at the store and you tried to like put everything that you need to live for like a week straight, I, I, we have a hard time putting it all in there. Like, I'm not just food. I'm talking about hygiene products. I'm talking about, you know, and don't even be started about if you're going to explore and you need to buy some ice picks because you're going to, you know, microtech and um, <laughs> and going cave spelunking, you know, with ropes and such. And you need to go buy uh, uh, all these different crazy things from all these different stores. One of the things that you'll notice is you got bags, you have shopping carts. You have, uh, in game, there's going to be trolleys and trolley-like physics we talked about last night. And I thought about, like, how 
we take the we take the shopping carts and the uh, do-it-yourself style store uh, flatbeds and the wholesale company of uh, flatbeds for, for for granted and uh, it's something missing from the game that I, I think once it's in um, it's gonna be like how do we live without that for a while especially with actual inventory in place I mean I could even see myself even just having a small trolley shoved in there taken from Lord knows what pad some random place <laughs> inside my ship just for you know moving products back and forth for delivery missions and stuff i hope the ships just come with them honestly because i mean ships are expensive enough already but especially cargo ones should have like dollies and hand trucks trolleys even with the uh even with the concept of having a uh a tractor beam there's going to be need for specifics that are uh, designed to like place the. Oh, that's pretty cool. There's going to need to be. I'm desyncing pretty bad apparently. This is my curse. This is my curse uh, for uh, mentioning that I had no problems with 30Ks. <laughs> apparently, it's doing everything but 30Ks. So in the battle versus the Connie, the clear winner is the server, and I see on the chat. <laughs> I, could, I promise I didn't set this up. <laughs> oh, goodness. I'm gonna I'll drop this and reopen it for another one. In the spirit of giving the servers a chance, I am uh, I just literally started recording while I clicked in. It did not let me pick a location during the PTU. It often lets you pick different locations, even if you've already loaded in different places, unless the server remembers you somewhere specifically. So I'm giving the servers a chance to give to to uh, to show their best side after they made a mistake, <laughs> after they 30k'd us all. <laughs> Um, those who operate on the PTU tend to know where these things are coming from. You just, you saw the chat just light up with goodbye. It's been fun. <laughs> See you all in the next one, you know, kind of things. Um, it is meant to be a test iteration. I, I was actually on the servers, uh, in two different occasions, I think, or at least one where the server literally was taken offline because they were patching. They physically were hot patching and a brand new version and it was like the middle of the day and it was crazy. It was like, what is going on? And the server physically changed over to a new version. <laughs> Had to reinstall and everything with the, uh, it was only like, I don't know, 500 megs, something like that. But it was a, you know, decent size hot fix for a few different things. So once again, it's a test environment. It's meant to be that way. The people that you are seeing, if you, if you're watching videos and you're seeing all these shiny, beautiful Orison shots, they are getting them and they're experiencing the same thing I am. I, I just, I show all the good and the bad if, if, if possible. Um, without wasting too much of your time. So uh, what I'm seeing rumor wise is that the regen cost for power consumption on the size one through four cannons on, on all sorts of cannons is uh, something that they have been adjusting for a while. And uh, the cost per round to regen energy specifically is uh, uh, actually very interesting. So it's been it's it's being lowered sig uh, a decent amount depending on the size. Like once again, these are rumors, but you know, size one is like in the was was for example cost of sixty something energy is now in the forties. Uh, size two is eighties in the something energy is now in the fifties. Size three was 110 plus energy now down in the 70s. So you can see how these are uh, something that is kind of going changing and changing and changing. All And it, it is large changes the higher you go. Like in size six, we're talking about jumping from around 1500 all the way down to the thousands. So it's an interesting thing. Distortion cannons basically were almost either at least a third lowered in their energy usage uh, so that's actually really cool 
and ballistic cannon ammo has basically been left alone in the most recent patch. So I, I, I tried to find a little more in the weeds information while we were waiting for this to load. That's what I found. And, okay. Let's get back out to there. This pat, this server is feeling pretty, pretty, uh, pretty mellow. I'm feeling pretty good. If you notice, though, I spawned back in my room, not out by the, uh, the by the Kia. It's entirely possible it tried to spawn me, and I was I was standing in not in, in nowhere near a ground, um, you know where the shuttles are. If I spawned outside where the shuttle, and the shuttle didn't happen to be there at that moment, I probably would have been falling to my death. So maybe it was better that way. <laughs> but still, I'm not going to give them the benefit of the doubt on that. <laughs> it should not have happened, and that's a definitely a 30k. It's a beautiful artwork there. Hi. Thanks for coming in. Hello there. Okay. So, um... Yeah, the art here is beautiful. They, they did such a good job on this place. Upstairs, by the way, is the spa, the gym, if you're wondering. I am not going to do a tour over there. I am strictly trying to get over to my Taurus. Sorry, my Phoenix, my Phoenix, my Phoenix. Sorry to get you guys excited. Just noticed a shuttle taking off. Distinctly coming from this station, so we're going to kind of slow down a little bit. Just kind of mellow. Kind of mellow out slightly. Somebody already posted up a meme where they photoshopped in a leaf blower into the hands of one of the guards. I thought that was kind of funny. But um, I'm actually a pretty big fan of those, those style of leaves, like the cherry tree leaves. I don't know if that's exactly what it is, but it's really cool. Please clear the hatch. The shuttle is being departed. Yes, I know the lore team, by the way, uh, had a lot of work done on the exact type of trees that would be well-suited for this environment with this much sun and all sorts of things. Sorry, I'm not an expert on that stuff, <laughs> but um, I do recall that uh, information. I just wish I had it off the top of my head. I also wish that they had little uh, tooltips down on the ground there that explained all that. That's an example of they went through all the work to explain some of that of why they chose those type of trees and why they were important for Crusader and the feel and the aesthetic of Crusader. Put those in. Put that put that in a plaque somewhere, right? Right when you walk outside, but when you're exploring. You know, that that's important stuff. I think Hurston Hurston family and Hurston Dynamics in general, the company, did a great job on Lorville. Because when you go into Lorville Central, you, and to be fair, that wasn't a first iteration place, but when you go into the central, central business district, district, you go in there and there's like a timeline on the freaking wall that literally gives you the entire history of Hurston and Hurston Dynamics, the family of Hurston and Hurston Dynamics. When you go on the wall inside Constantine Hurston's office, who runs, runs the trade hub there, he, he literally has on his wall all the old family members, like why the moon was named after Ida. You can literally see a picture of Ida. Like, it's incredible what, you know, that's a really cool, like, nice touch. Like, each moon is actually named after somebody. And there's even a backstory behind each one of those people. At least something. And that's a nice touch. I think small things like that really make a change. The music is beautiful here. Pedro did an incredible job. There is a lot of really nice flow to this place. The design of the place is really nice. I even like the name of the spaceport. I like how everything's done. Hang on one second, just notice something. Sorry about that. I don't take responsibility for those chats. I try to leave them in if the community is being chill. Uh, and sometimes I learn things. Um, I like to share them. Especially PTU is pretty uh, active folks, but sometimes they're just chatting about other things that aren't game related. related. Um, not bad things, but just whatever. I don't know what the heck that was. Okay, uh, so departure lounge. Now, I'm actually, I've been debating on my walk over here. By the way, if you haven't already seen it, the rental page at Orison is getting pretty big. It'll actually work. And you can see some of, some of the many ships available. You know what? Let's do a Connie Andromeda.
I love my Phoenix, but I love also variant variables. Also, I think my Phoenix is still going to be on a uh, reclaim status. This last I left, it was on top of a barge. <laughs> uh, the Chairman's Club is over here if you haven't already seen it on the 50 screenshots on Reddit. And uh, folks being very excited for it. No, you cannot get in. Yes, I tried on Chapter 2 of my videos. Um, no luck. I am, a, I am in the concierge and all that fun stuff. Uh, subscriber as well. No luck so far. Yes, I've tried to get in. One of the only nice little perks, if you haven't already seen that, and I'll just show you, is uh, you can see the champagne on ice and everything. It's a nice touch and the nice cool towels. Sorry, I get weird. Um, and then you can see the chairman, you can see the liveries of uh, uh, documents and stuff like that for the uh, letterheads and stuff. There's some nice little touch there. But, uh, yeah. For what it's worth, I think the concierge club should have stuff like this. <laughs> uh, the original lamp was so popular, and it was just a silly little add-on for the hangar. It was like a, I think it was like two dollars or something. Um, little trinkets like that, fans, lights, you know, things like that that are in game would be really cool and sell well. Um, for those who don't already know or haven't seen it concierge you can buy things like a like a pen or something with the chairman's club logo that you saw on the wall there um there's food places another food place over there and uh yeah they're not not really exciting to me although i can understand why people would like that it's kind of something cool a little nod to star citizen i think the chairman's club stuff doesn't have explicitly say like in huge letters star citizen on most of it which is actually really cool about it like, for example, the golf shirts. If I went golfing more often and, um, you know, uh, I was trying to, like, you know, reach out to people to let them know, you know, I was in the Star Citizen without, like, going crazy, you know, like an evangelistic about it. <laughs> Just be chill about it. I think it's a low-key cool factor. I have a Crusader shirt that it was f fan-made. Um... And I really love it. I wish they would do official shirts like that that just had the logos of different companies. Um, hats, like, this would be another one. Just have the logo of the company. No Star Citizen anything on it. Or maybe just the, the Star Citizen logo on tiny print on the back of it or something. It doesn't have to have the big name and the website or anything. Um, we know what it is. <laughs> and uh, it would be really fun to see somebody in an Origin shirt and a uh, Drake shirt just bat you know, arguing it out in, in public. It would be kind of entertaining. <laughs> I'm a little talkative tonight. You, uh, you all caught me on the, the right side of a 20 ounce of coffee. Colombian coffee. So, uh, that's why I'm going to keep myself going on. And hopefully, my energy will be able to be outputted into the, uh, the propulsion system of this ship. I haven't flown an Andromeda in a while. Uh, they don't look that much different on the inside. I'm going to just dare to come back here where you can see that it has a nice big bay. Not as big as the Taurus, which we've just confirmed. By the way, uh, last night can fit two Ursa rovers. Two Ursa rovers can fit inside the Taurus Bay, which looks like this, but it's longer. Uh, it has less of a cutout, too, on the Taurus Bay. Um, back here, instead of the additional bay you would have for an extra 6 SUU on the Taurus, you have the uh, snub, past the engineering. You have the snub. So that's the difference. But in this one, you could fit a single Andromeda... Sorry, <laughs> Ursa in the Andromeda, and this is a really cool ship. I, I think the I think the Andromeda is a nice all arounder. It's a it's a interesting ship. I see it as a gunship. And, uh, they talked about improving lighting. You can see it's nice and blue in here. It's got an interesting tint to it. Always has uh, to me. Um, it looks even brighter to me, and it looks more it looks more tense. Let's see what it looks like with the lights on. I am playing with fire here, but I'm going to try to exit out this seat. Or at the very least, just spin myself around for a moment. I think ex I have to exit and then hop back in in order to do that. That's how it looks lit up. 
So it switches over from that blue to that green. Oh, shucks. how it looked all lit up. I don't know how I ended up in the turret. <laughs> Let's hail the glory be hailing the landing services. You are clear to launch. I may have edited out a little bit of a kerfuffle where I accidentally either clicked into it or it automatically put me into the lower turret, which was always uh, inadvisable. Right now on the PTU, do not go into the Connie lower turrets at all. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Actually, I lie. The, uh, the Taurus lower turret is doing okay. The Connie lower turrets on the other ships seem to be acting up. I've seen that on multiple ships now. So let's take that. So the Atmo on Orison really changes the game a little bit when you're trying to, like, it, you know, the buoyancy is really interesting. That's what it really feels like. It's buoyancy. It does feel different. It doesn't feel like a normal atmosphere, but at the same time, it does have Atmo effects. So the suggestion was to go at 45 degrees up. Let's get our landing gear up. Stop being rookies. You want a 45 degree angle, have the velocity way trimmed up on the left side. You can see my little red square over there, all the way at the top. And we're moving along. If I afterburner slash what is now called boost, that's how much space I get. If I let it go into the red, it would have to recharge and it would take a much longer. But you see, I've got like 5k out of that, you know, between the boost and the uh, regular jump, well, warp uh, speed. Now, let's play with this a little bit. So the suggestion from Aria over on SC Leaks is, this isn't a leak or anything, it's just it's the server she's a part of. Um, let's play with this a little bit. We're gonna attempt to use the space bar for our VTOL capacity. So the VTOL, so the thrusters and such. And we're also going to go forward. So I have my W key down and I also have my space bar down. I'm trying to see if it makes me go faster on the 45 degree plane. Now I'm gonna take my finger off the space bar. I don't know, it looks like it's going faster with the thruster on. Now, when I hit F, it's like throwing us off course. I'm gonna hit enable VTOL now. I'm going through a cloud, by the way, that's that a particle effect. And just a reminder, my uh, settings for clouds is on medium. So if you're wondering why they don't look great or they do look great, they can look better if you uh, are on medium, less than, better than medium settings. So, Let's get back on target. So it was suggested to hit 45 degree angle. And also hit the space bar. Now, I have my, fi my, my, my facing directly forward at the 45 degree, well, it's like 50 now. Let's kick that back down to 45.
So if this method is helping in speed, we will have to focus on keeping that 45 degree angle quite a lot. Oh, by the way, remember this is stock, which is actually a good way to test this, um, especially because right now all modules are all across the board relatively the same. But uh, this is a good way to test this because not everybody's going to have like in the future going to have like grade A, best of the best, military grade gear, <laughs> you know, across the board. Um, people that are going to see a tip on, on, on a site or a community or on a chat or something, they're going to see something and they're going to go, let me go test that. They're going to be, you know, grade C at best type equipment and it has to work for them too. So I don't know. It seems like it's a little bit of work to keep this at that 45. I'm going to take my, I'm going to take my finger off the, uh, the space bar and we're going to see what happens here. So I'm going to keep W on and ditch the space bar. Honestly, even with the VTOL mode turned on, it feels like it's going faster without hitting space bar. And you can see VTOL mode is on in the top front. See those fan doors are open on the front left and front right, on the far left and far right. So VTOL mode is without a doubt on, but um, it seems to be still taking its sweet time to get through the Atmo. Get some boost in to kind of speed this process up. Now I have noticed that when I hold the space bar, there's a second bar to the, to the uh, left side that goes all the way up. I, I hold the F key, but I'm afraid that I'll get in, uh, fall into some problems there if I hold that F key down because uh, it'll start changing my trajectory again and ruin this test. I think they're on to something, but I think that uh, I think it's lower than 45 degrees. I think it would be, let's, let's, let's see. Let's try like 35. Nope, see that's going slower. I mean, your, your angle isn't as high, so the speed has to really be shining in order for that to be a good idea. Okay, so if you track in with like your cursor almost hitting 40, you can hold at 45-ish and then just hold the W key in the space bar. I think that's all there is to this trick. Hang on. Sorry, I had to restart the uh, recording just to be sure uh, I didn't lose my, my, my footage. Um, that's a good tip no matter what, no matter how stable or unstable the, the video is on a uh, test server especially. Con uh, you know, every few minutes, uh, do a save. Okay, so we're like 150-ish. I'm, I'm feeling like the VTOL might have helped. I, I, I don't know. I think this number on the on the left side that's giving the higher thrust rating, I believe that that's not helping me get my numbers correct because uh, it's focused on just the main thrusters, I believe. So when I'm doing the VTOL and the main thrusters, I think that it's, I'm not I'm not able to really really reap the the, the, the number that raw stat number wise is not really uh, shining because if I drop the space bar right now if I okay that's me I'm back on the space bar yeah it seems like those alt numbers are going up nice and fast so I I don't know <laughs> your mileage may vary and even if this does help you in any way shape or form it'll probably get nerfed 
So I'm, I'm pretty sure this, even though it's not anything sketchy, it's probably not intended to help you. It was worth trying. I'm going to uh, close my VTOL up. Remember, I did have VTOL on the entire time. The little doors were open. And now, with them disabled, the doors in the front left and the front right, you can see, are clearly closed. So, uh... I'm going to just, instead of sticking to 45 degrees, I'll stick to a higher degree ratio. And um, I'm only 175,000 feet. I think it's close to here that I can start quantuming. I'm not quite sure. We'll find out really fast. It'll yell at me. <laughs> this is called reading out, by the way. So, if you ever need to leave Quantum, like an emergency, you can just do that. Your, your ship will hate you for it, but you can do that. Notice the cooldown penalty. Um, the ship's going to have a power issue for a while. Shields are critical. But you know what? You're at a quantum. So one of the big winners recently was the constellations. I correctly guessed they were going to make the, uh, just occurred to me, like really, I don't have anything to really do here. I did my test. Um, the rear narsals have been reinforced on the, on the Connies. And they also talked about other parts of larger ships that are, you know, would seem very weak have been reinforced. So we have confirmed that a lot of those things, like for example, where these engines are, I talked about in the barge, the video I linked on the barge, about these, uh, these, these narcells on the rear, each one of them being 25% of your main thrusters, being impacted greatly by being knocked off. And if you look on, the, on this one, for example, on the Andromeda, you have cannons on top as well that you would also lose. Really nice cannons. Gunship, gun a gunship. Let me see, can I dumb fire my rockets? Oh, yes, I can. The size two missiles are in the dead center. You can see four beautiful racks of them, and they also reload, if I'm not mistaken. And then on the sides is the size ones. That's one dumb fired. Size two. <laughs> Fox two. I say they're not Fox two, but <laughs> especially when I'm dumb firing them. So by pressing the middle mouse button, you can enable and disable your your uh, your missile systems very quickly. They send a clear message. I think one of them's charging up. Let's see. Right mouse button. Then left mouse button. Nope. Middle mouse button. And then trigger. There's the size one.
Man, I missed a video for the 4th of July for sure. We could have went to a moon and just made a whole new bunch of craters. There's the pip symbol for the missiles. So let's do another one. So metal mouse button loads it. Right mouse button changes it. Size two versus size ones. The trigger should fire it, but I don't have a target. So I'm gonna try the middle, I think it's middle mouse button, left mouse button for triggering then let go of the trigger. Was it the way around? So let go of the middle mouse button. Let go both, maybe? Double tap the left mouse button for some reason. There's the pip. Galactic Actual, you got a nuke inbound. <laughs> <laughs> Feels a lot like that a little bit. Where the pip's like a Dreadus contact and it's coming, it would be coming towards the ship and uh, the big cannons and the, the screening ships will be firing while the uh, Vipers are attempting to shoot it out of the sky. <laughs> and these things are pretty maneuverable. It's for a large ship. I mean, it's uh, pretty maneuverable. I mean, just imagine this thing coming at you and hurling all this lead at you. It's pretty impressive. And it's got all those missiles, too. Um, and one other thing that doesn't work well right now, but all these bigger ships tend to have a lot of countermeasures. So... That's countermeasures being fired off. And uh, they basically go right behind your ship while you got a trajectory. How you're looking, too. Pretty cool. Countermeasures have all grown up. Uh, so they have a finite amount of those things in your HUD in the bottom right corner. See that 35, 36? Right now, they don't really work well against missiles, flares specifically, uh, but over time, I think that they'll work really well. These are decoys. Switching over to flares, you can get them on the button. So, we're kind of having fun with a, with a little gunship. I think the best way to end this, even without a player to work my uh, broken turret, <laughs> Or the one that works <laughs> would probably be more appropriate is, why don't we do a, uh, let's see, the claim jumpers. If it's not too far away, I'll do it. Um, let's see. No, it's 37 million kilometers away. Holy cow. I should have actually checked that first. <laughs>
Let's mining claim. The other one's over towards Crusader. cooldown. Feel like short quantum. Orson's nice and toasty over there. Apparently I somehow have two different quantum, well actually, no, I have a second quantum beacon. some reason the closer one is not accessible it could just be that it's obstructed it could be that it's just glitched out it could be that I didn't accept the right kind of contract it could be that's broken be hilarious it'd be ironic if it was on the it was on the list and I just didn't heed it but uh, I guess uh, it's not in the cards right now remember we're on the test server so it's not even worth me grinding the AUEC um, I can't take it anymore just put them in nice to be able to show the Andromeda kicking some butt. Because <laughs> it is quite a little gun show. So that trick that allows you to use your VTOL thrusters to be able to uh, get out of the space faster, out the space faster, possibly out of higher atmosphere of uh, Orison, is not practical for entering Orison. Plain and simple, uh, you're going down, not up. <laughs> Unless you did the ship upside down, which just got me thinking. Maybe, just maybe, we can get away with this. So. feel the ship groaning it, like you can actually feel it like starting to lose its uh its excitement about this concept <laughs>
let's see. So, I don't know why I'm leaning my head forward like I'm like hanging in the seat upside down. <laughs> uh, but, let's see. So, we're currently, I do not trust that velocity modifier because I have my hand on the W key and the space bar at the same time. And you can see the VTOLs right there. Are open and firing. Now, this goes without saying, but you gotta remember to take your finger off both of those things. And also factor in that when you get close, the VTOLs will not help you stay from crashing because coming down is not the same as going up. Uh, plain and simple. You will not be able to spin fast enough, I don't think. Uh, control might be something. I probably should have tried that before I did all this crazy upside down stuff, but hey, we're fully committed now. Okay, so I'm gonna take my hand off the space bar and let's see. And the velocity modifier is going up. It's also entirely possible this was an unintended thing and the devs patched it out of existence, whatever this idea was. Or it was just something if somebody came up with that makes sense, but it never really was more that placebo effect. Anything's possible. Or it's such a small difference. The, more, the third option, the most obvious, the most likely option, it's such a different, such a small difference nobody even notices. Let's see. I should probably use like a phone timer or something and like time it. <laughs> okay, I just hit the space bar key. Let's see what happens. So we're back to VTOL mode along with thrusters. Upside down. <laughs> Tempt you to enter Orison faster. Orison's like 80k, so we're almost there already. This is the entry point to Orison, like you would be warping in and you, uh, you want to come in. Not upside down with your VTOL thrusters on, but uh, you would want to get to 80k as soon as possible, safely. <laughs> Hopefully this is never the meta. It's really interesting when the clouds are moving through worse and they, especially at distance, at least on the quality settings I have, I'd imagine the draw distances and other interesting things are impacted by the quality settings. Um, it doesn't look too hot when you're up this far. When you get really close, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's an interesting place. And in a weird way, I'm okay with that. Like, I mean, the whole point is not to gawk at Orison from 6,000 miles up. The whole point with Orison is to look at it when you're, you're on it or near it, to really appreciate it and value it. As a place to live, as a place to uh, function out of and operate out of as an organization. I could see it. Once again, I go back, I'm sorry to beat the broken drum, but being able to dock a Javelin, a hull D, a hull E, at the very least in these places will be critical for this to really shine and be a part of it another generation. I, I, I don't know if it is or it will, it will not allow that. They've been very mum about it. They just keep talking about how large and capital class ships are very functional here and popular here because of that lower gravity, because of the lower gravity. Well, ships that traditionally can't go into gravity, if they could go here, that would be a huge game changer. And planets like Orson would be highly contested and very prized by groups of organizations that have these ships, or even just organizations that are friendly with large organizations that just want to be part of that group and, and, and that status of late game and, and, and we've made it, you know? Like, that would be a really exciting thing. And just even logistics-wise, being able to haul into these locations with the largest of ships. Currently, hull Ds and Es would be banished just staying in space forever. Being able to come into Orison would be a really cool experience with a larger ship. Just some thoughts. I guess we'll see what that really means. As we get closer to 80k, I took my finger off of the uh, space bar. I disable my VTOL. Oh, I did that without even... That made it look professional. <laughs> now, the 
This is one of those times where I've got to break out my beat key. Because usually the uh, the beacons are where they want you to be. I suspect they don't want me to be flying over some random uh, platform. Although, I guess like last night I landed on a barge and hung out. Didn't seem to mind. It was pretty cool. Who knows, maybe we can land, maybe the whales are so big we can land a cutlass on one. They're certainly bigger than cutlasses. <laughs> I'm using that new boost, it's, it's not an after, totally not an afterburner. I will say that it's, it takes a lot longer to wear it out. The spooling is real, as we talked about. And uh, it's one thing to talk about these uh, patches, another thing to actually do them. But um, it's really cool to see it in action. If you go into the red, by the way, it doesn't, like, destroy your ship. Here, I'll do it. It just slows your ship down a little bit and has to recharge its full, full thruster power. So don't panic too much. It's not like you're going to blow up or something if you go too far. But it takes a really long time for the boost up to update once you go into the red. So, I'm pretty much going to wrap up very soon. I want to thank you all for staying this long, if you have. Um, if you've been jumping around this video and wondering how things are, I have been trying to uh, start that whole idea of having jump points for, especially videos that have multiple different topics, different, different sources that I'm going through. Uh, in an attempt to try to cater more towards folks that have less time and people that want to uh, interested in specific topics and they don't want to have to sit through the entire video to get to those topics uh, please give me some feedback on that um, if, 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 if you liked it if you value that um, it takes more time for me to get down all the different points and then mark them and then set them up for you to be able to go back to quicker but uh, I hope that it's one more thing that I'm going to kind of do to increase people's experiences and, and continue the performance and enjoy, enjoy this uh, kind of as, as the channel grows. I'm trying to bring more of those type of service mentalities uh, things to folks. Um, I'm still enjoy making these. I, I want to try to make you enjoy them as much as I enjoy making them. I, you, you enjoy watching them and participating. Uh, please, please, please. I, I don't bite. <laughs> Hit me up on uh, the feedback and the comments, uh, Discord, you know, the usuals. I'm not going to be a broken record every video about that. Um, but um, I welcome all the communication. I welcome a lot of different um, things like that. And as always, please proceed to sign back. Yeah, you give me a landing bay after I get pushed out of the busy area. <laughs> uh, Orson. I guess if it was too perfect, it would be uh, it would be too good. Anyway, uh, please like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Uh, once again, feedback is very valuable, and um, I'm gonna keep talking until I get over to that station. I, w I, w I have a feeling that like. Some folks seem to watch these, and they probably like sit there and they're like, "X to doubt meme folks," you know, and they have that face, have that look on their face, <laughs> where uh, they don't really uh, believe that I have the competency to be able to complete certain things, <laughs> based on at least the co the discussions I have after these videos are released. Um, it is what it is. I have fun with making these videos. I enjoy making them. I sometimes maybe take them a little too much fun but um i hope that i bring that perspective of a backer who really has a passion for this and wants to make sure everyone ends up in the right place that they want to be um so you have the inform you're armed with the information you want when it comes time for a sale or it comes time to consider your fleet or when you're making a large in cane purchase you know uh, you're not going to make the wrong purchase and you know uh, think through carefully what, what your options you have and where the future of each ship lies 
Um, it's not just to me anymore about what you're what you're purchasing on the website. It's also what you're purchasing in game. I've had more and more discussions with folks about having a, a money making ship. They get in, they get they start out with, and they're not they're not always that big, and then purchasing in game uh, these different ships. And the folks who are uh, able to be more blessed than others or have had more time to be able to make money are starting to be able to share their UEC with their with their org mates, especially ones you trust. Please make sure it's people you trust that you're sharing with. But I, I've seen more and more that that's happening where they're able to get them started on something nice, something small that works. And, uh, you know, really, I think the Connie Taurus is going to be an example of a buying game type of, type of vehicle. Uh, the folks who bought it in, out in, in this in, server i don't think they'll be disappointed but at the same time i think that the uh the connie buying game mantra will be more and more popular i predict that i'll be yelling that uh <laughs> i'll be at the banner the banner leader in that uh if if it is reasonably priced for what it is as you just saw the connie has all the features please don't put me in that lower turret again <laughs> but uh <laughs> It even has a table. I mean, come on, it has a table. <laughs> that sometimes occasionally glows and works. I mean, how, how can you disagree with that? How can you disagree with the table? <laughs> uh, long story made short. I think the Connies are solid. They're glitched to all hell. Especially the Andromeda, apparently, much more than the Phoenix. But the uh, the Taurus, for example, based on my experiences with it, has been pretty solid, and I'm pretty happy with it. I probably should have turned the power off, but I don't even care. It's a rental, <laughs> just like a rental car. <laughs> what? Okay, do I take the challenge? Do I take the dare? Either way, the video's over here, so let's just, uh, let's take the dare. My money's on occlusion. Wow. I don't even know what to say to that. <laughs> I did not intentionally do anything, <laughs> but uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's just shut that off there. <laughs> As you can see, the test server is not perfect. The test server has a lot to go by. You can see where things are supposed to be going. I feel that the PTU will be in everyone's hands extremely soon. I think it has to be there. It absolutely has to. I'm going to let my character get much needed rest. And probably this will be my one time on the PTUJ uh, thing. You are blocking an active flight bay. Please vacate the vicinity. Okay. <laughs> and um, he, he can keep Warning. the ship. You are blocking an active flight bay. He can keep please the ship. It's a, it's a rental. And uh, like I said, please like, comment, subscribe. If it helps you out. Even if you just enjoyed it. I try to make this a little fun this time. Let me know what you think of that. Um, do you want me to stick more factual? Do you want me to have more adventures like this? More fun mixed in as best I can, especially for people that hang out longer. I like to think that it makes it less dry and kind of is like a reward uh, for, you know, having the serious topics and then also have some fun at the time, same time. Okay, uh, so that's my video for tonight. I wish you all a wonderful night morning whatever it is for you please stay awesome and please keep tuning in i'm loving it i'm having, having great fun with this and i hope you are too take care